WGBB. This is Healthy Living Radio with your host, Dr. David Sharp, a compelling program featuring today's top health care professionals. Join us as we explore the latest treatments and technologies to provide better care in today's ever-changing world of health and wellness. Now here's your host, Dr. David Sharp. You're listening to Healthy Living Radio, dedicated to bringing you the latest advances in health and wellness so you can live better, healthier, and longer. I'm your host, Dr. David Scharf. Today's topic, how small changes in your smile can make a big difference. Our guest on tonight's show is Long Island's go-to dentist for cosmetic dentistry, Dr. Donald Kahn. Don, welcome to the show. Hi, David. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, You're welcome. You know, before we get into tonight's topic, uh, just tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, Where do you practice? How long have you been there? What's your practice like? I'm a general practice dentist, dentist in Farmingdale. I've been in Farmingdale. I've been in Farmingdale for 34 years. Um, I have two partners, uh, Dr. Angela Ferrari and Dr. Daniel Aldiri. Uh, between us, we have 50 years of experience, and uh, we treat. We are full practice uh, in terms of who we treat. Everybody that uh, has any types of problems, we are there to handle any types of problems. You know, I hear a lot of phrases, uh, you know, uh, cosmetic enhancement, smile enhancement, cosmetic makeover. What does all that mean? Um, A lot of people today are very interested in the aesthetic appearance of their smiles. And there are many different things that can be done from very, very simple and sublime to very, very sophisticated. So a smile enhancement can be something that can be very, very simple. And a um, smile makeover is something that can be very sophisticated and can have a lot of different components to it. So when you have someone that's unhappy with their smile, what's your, what's your typical patient? Who's the typical person that, that comes to you for smile makeover, smile enhancement? Um, there is no real specific patient. There are so many different patients. Uh, for example, there was this woman who came into my office last week, and she was really concerned about her smile. And um, we took a look at her, and I talked with her about it. And what she really was concerned about was the fact that one tooth looked a little longer than the other front tooth, and she didn't like the color. So what we were able to do for her was to grind down or remove a little bit of the tooth that was a little bit longer and then she had some whitening and she was thrilled and that's all she needed. It was very simple. It took just a couple of visits and she um, was able to achieve what she really came in for was an improvement that was easy to do. Mm Do you find a lot of the people that, that you um, help them with their smile, do they say to you, Dr. Khan, I, I don't like the way my smile looks? Do you say to them, hey, Loretta, your smile needs a makeover? How does that typically work? Well, a lot of patients come in with, um, with questions and things about their smile um, in terms of things that bother them and maybe things that they really chose not to do anything about over many years. So when we open up a conversation, it's interesting because we ask a lot of questions of patients and then they open up and tell us what really is concerning them. And we are able to find out from the patient what it is that really bothers them about their smile or what it is that they really would like to accomplish. Do you find that the people that, uh, that want a smile makeover, do they fall in, into any kind of category? Are they people who've maybe been away from dentistry for a long time or neglected their smile or people that have always been in dentistry? You know, where do those people typically fall? I think there's a wide range of people who want smile makeovers. Um, we, we have a lot of situations where we have pa- patients who come in who are mothers and fathers who put their family's dental health before their own and they decide to come in after a number of years and they have dentistry done. Uh, maybe people had a career change. Maybe they had a job change where before they were in an office and now they have to get out and they have to speak to a lot of different people. So now they're interested in in uh, making a change as far as their smile is concerned. People didn't realize that they put their hands up to their mouth to cover their teeth. And they, when they, we talk about it and we spoke about it, we find out what it is that really, really bothers them. So in answer to your question, there are so many different types of people that come in. People who come in who have had sophisticated dentistry over the years, they want to make a change. People who hadn't had any dentistry really want to find out what's available and what can be done to them. You know, it's funny what you said before. In my mind, I guess, uh, before I had you on the show, I always thought that someone having a smile makeover, it was almost like a luxury. I'm going to treat myself to something. But, you know, in today's job market, presenting yourself and being presentable is so important. It's almost like a presentable smile is a necessity. 
if you just take a look at the magazines and TV commercials, everything is about people's appearance. People, this generation, whether you're 20 and you have little spaces between your teeth or you're 30 years old and you're missing teeth or you're 50 years old, everybody seems to be geared towards um, their appearance. And it, I'm not just saying dentistry, but in terms of their, their appearance, the look, their clothes, their hair, there's so many things are going on. It's, it's a really, for dentistry, it's a really exciting time because technology has changed so much that dentistry that we're able to do today is so different than the dentistry that was done 30, 40, 50 years ago. Yeah. How is it different? I know we were talking before the show a little bit, a little bit about technology. And you were telling me that you have a machine in your office that actually makes the crowns. Tell me a little bit about that. That is called the Serec machine. It's, you know, for the use of words, it's called CAD CAM technology, which what it is is something that's really been around for a long time that we are able to go ahead and take a picture of a patient's tooth and then send all this information to a computer in the office and out of a block of porcelain that's in the robot, so to speak, it is um, shaped and designed to fit the preparation to what we took out of the tooth. And what is wonderful about this is it's a one-visit procedure. A patient comes in, whether they need an onlay or a crown, um, they can have a CEREC restoration made from start to finish in one visit. They don't have to go to the, you know, we don't have to send anything to the lab. They don't have to come back for multiple visits. In today's society, getting things done right away seems to be a very, very important part of people's acceptance of treatment. Wow, that's something. You know, for a lot of people, I would guess, you know, the time is always an issue. And um, I know a lot, of, a lot of people sometimes don't go to the dentist and their mouth has really fallen into disrepair. Uh, and I would, I would, what's the mindset of a lot of people like when they come to you and they really are in, are in dire shape. Well, you know, what is, what, what's their mindset like? It's very important that we find that out, that we ask the right questions to see what their mindset is. Um, I think one of the main reasons why people stay away and don't go to the dentist on a regular basis is their fear of dentistry. Maybe they had a bad experience at one time in their lifetime, and they chose, because of that, not to return. Dentistry today should be a pain-free experience. I've had patients come in. I had a man last week who came in who couldn't believe that he was able to um, have dentistry done and he felt no discomfort whatsoever. Even the hygienists today are, the women who clean teeth are licensed to get people numb so they don't have to feel any discomfort even when they're getting cleanings. Mm -hmm. That's terrific. Uh, you know, I, for a lot of people, I guess the fear of dentistry, they'd rather stay away until it becomes a, a crisis situation. Um, and when they come in, are they typically, you know, ready to go? Are they testing the waters? Where do people fall usually? People, when they come in under those circumstances, a lot of people after this longer period of time are really embarrassed about their teeth. And they have a difficult time trying to figure out, they think it's almost too late, what can they do? It's never too late. You know, we come in and we try to see, you know, what it is that we can achieve by, you know, what, what their needs are. But we try to have people who are embarrassed or afraid to try to understand that we're on their side, that we really, really want to uh, get them to understand what treatment can be about and communicate to them so that they know that they're comfortable in the environment. That's a very important thing, to have people comfortable in the setting, in our environment, so that they can comfortably proceed with that. Industry. Walk me through the process a little bit. I'm a new patient and I, I'm unhappy with my smile. I call your office, I make an appointment, we have a visit. How do you go about determining what my options are, what it's going to take to make my smile look good? Take me through everything up to the point where you start treating me. Um, patient will come in and the first visit will be approximately two hours long. We spend a lot of time with the patient when they first come into the office. It's very important that we get as much information from the patient at that time. We will take necessary radiographs or x-rays. We take pictures of their mouth, actual photos inside their mouth and outside of their mouth. We check all soft tissues, which is the gums and the cheeks and any tissues that are in their mouth to make sure that there's no, you know, problems as far as um, 
things that need to be addressed. Uh, we go ahead and we take models uh, of patients' teeth, so we are able to look at these and study them. Um, I do a thorough oral examination and an oral cancer examination so that we can assure the patient that everything that we're doing will be thorough and complete and will allow us to gather all this information so that the next visit that they come back is just for a consultation, just to sit down to explain to the patient what we can do, what it will look like, how long it will take, all the important things that the patients want to hear. Now, how much input does the patient have? In other words, the patients come in and say, I want XYZ. How do you know what they want? How much, and how much input do they have in designing their smile? Patients, some patients come in and they really want it. They have a specific thing. Maybe they have been to another office or maybe they know that they're missing a tooth and they want something specifically. And that's okay because we really want to sit down with them and say to them, we take a look at their specific problem and we just just address the specific problem that they have. But a lot of people that come in, they have a lot of questions and we try to take a look at all the questions and we try to formulate um, by asking them questions, by, you know, showing them, um, you know, with a mirror, are you happy about the length of your teeth? Are you happy about the color of your gums? Are you happy about the spaces you may have? We try to ask as many questions about what concerns them so that we know what their goals are. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. I'm Dr. David Scharf. You're listening to Healthy Living Radio on WGBB. This is Healthy Living Radio with Dr. David Scharf. We're back now. Thank you very much. Um, you know, it's funny you said about the color of the gums. A lot of people I see, they have like a, a gray line right at the edge of their gum. What is that? I see that all the time. Um, that's where the advent of modern or more recent technology has really um, been a wonderful thing for patients as opposed to some of the great dentistry we did many years ago. Uh, many years ago, whenever we were doing crowns, we had to support the porcelain, the glass that goes on the tooth, with gold, with metal, and this porcelain was baked on there, and that's how we made the tooth. It was shaped. It was made to look like the tooth. But after many years, what happens, and it's just part of the aging process, the gums start to, start to shrink back. And when they do that, the metal margin of the old crowns get exposed. And they, people see that, and when they smile, there's a dark line. It looks gray. It, people are very self-conscious about that. Today, we don't have to use any metal in those restorations. So we can put a full porcelain restoration on there where you'll see no metal band or no discoloration. Wow, that's something. That's something. Um, <clears throat> you know, if I look at somebody whose smile doesn't look right to me, I'll look at it and it doesn't look right, but I don't know why it doesn't look right. Take me through when you look at a smile and you analyze it. What are some of the things you look at to de- that in your own mind you check off to say this is good, this isn't good? What are some of the things you consider? We have an aesthetic checklist which we go through on every single patient. It's very important because everybody's teeth are different so we have to establish what we're looking for and what the patient comes in with Uh, we look at their color of their teeth some people have white some people have gray some people have yellow some people have very stained teeth what type of stain is that there's all different kinds of stains and we need to know that you know do they um, do they smoke cigarettes do they drink wine these are things that we have to establish we need to know what the shape of their teeth. Some people have oval teeth. Some people have square teeth. Some people have rectangular teeth. We try to, you know, make sure that we look and we show them, you know, what type of teeth they have because we need to know, are they happy with that? Do they want to make a change from that? Um, we need to know the length of the teeth, you know, and the width of the teeth. It's important in terms of we, how we re- restore the teeth and have symmetry that certain teeth sometimes are wider on one side than on the other side. And we need to establish that so when we proceed we can take that into consideration. How much gum show when somebody smile? I have a patient who come in la- came in last week who hated her smile, and one of the reasons why she hated it was that she had a very, very gummy smile, and when she smiled, she saw that. Well, certain things can be corrected, you know, in terms of their, you know, aesthetics, but certain things can't be, so we have to be honest with the patient and tell them what it is we can do and what we can't do. Um, some teeth... You know, uh, when people smile, their lips, one side of their mouth might go up higher than the other, and you have to compensate for that when you you do something. 
these are a lot of the questions and things that we look at because this helps us and address what it is that the patient wants. What's people's mindset like? I would imagine when someone comes into your office and they hate the way their smile looks, and like you said, they smile, they hold their hand over their mouth, they're embarrassed, and then you do whatever you do, and a, a day later, a month later, however long it takes, they have the smile they've always wanted, they've always dreamed of. What's their emotion like? What's the, what kind of change do you see in people when you take them through that transformation? It's one of the things that we do that I love more than anything else. I mean, we we really try to change people's lives in terms of uh, their aesthetics and their ability to smile. Um, I had a woman, and I hear from her every year on the anniversary of the day that I completed the work, that how happy she is that she came to me, that she was able to do what she was able to do, and it's changed her life. She is much more social now than she used to be. She's happy with herself. She really has got a sense of, uh, just established a sense of freedom because now she can chew without having discomfort. She smiles all the time, whereas before she never smiled. Did you ever get anyone to say, ah, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. I wish I had my old yellow straggly teeth back again? You know, I don't really remember, you know, truly, I'm sure it's possible. But, you know, we try to figure out the people that truly want to go ahead and proceed with making this change and know that they really want to do it before we do it. You can have some signs from people. If they're really not sure that they really want to do this, we really don't want to proceed. We really want to make sure that they're comfortable in all their decisions and that if they make this decision to make these changes, they're 100% comfortable with it. If someone's listening and they're considering having cosmetic dentistry or touching up their smile, what should somebody look for in a cosmetic dentist? You know, when I drive up and down the street, it seems like almost every dentist under his name says cosmetic dentistry. But how does the patient know? How does the consumer know? How do they choose who to go to? I think a lot of things like that come from referrals. I, the greatest source of a compliment that we can get from a patient is when they refer in a family member or a neighbor because they had such a good experience. You can talk about what you do and say it, but if you don't really get good results, if you don't really pr produce excellent, excellent restorations, your, your success rate will not be there. Uh, we try, uh, in letting people know, try to make sure that we, des we get the desired result that we really want to make sure that they're very, very happy with the aesthetics of a completed case. Mm -hmm. Are there ever cases that are just, do you ever get people come in um, uh, that have a pretty nice smile already but just want a little touch-up, a little enhancement? Is that a part of what you do? That's, that's the difference. We, we categorize some of the things we do into a, a smile enhancement or a smile makeover. A smile enhancement is just a minor correction. As we talked about before, it may just need some whitening, some bleaching, and that's what their problem is, is that their teeth are a little gray, and with the procedure, their teeth are whitened, they are get brighter and that's all that they need and that's wonderful if somebody can come in and accomplish that. Um, reshaping teeth, you know, where we, we, we round corners or we flatten out edges or make them even uh, on the edges is another thing that is really simple to do. It's one visit. There's no discomfort. You don't have to be numb for that procedure and it can make a big difference in terms of the way pa patients' teeth look like. Even closing a space, you know, where somebody has uh, a space between teeth that's been bothering, that's a very, very simple procedure and that would just be part of a smile enhancement. That would be a one visit thing and accomplished very, very easily. And so then at the other end of the spectrum, uh, so those are people with a nice smile, that's a little touch-up. And then at the other end of the spectrum, I would imagine some of these cases can get very complicated. There are a lot of different choices in terms of smile makeovers. It's very, very important that we get all the information we need if the patient is considering making a major change in their smile. We have the ability to... Um, make veneers, which are porcelain restorations that are like a fingernail that go on top of the teeth, that will lighten the teeth, reshape the teeth, close spaces, or porcelain crowns. And these are restorations that are really, really long-lasting, that will proper care and, uh, and home care and people taking care of it. They'll get tremendous longevity and success and happiness out of them. How do you know, I'm a patient, I'm going to get cosmetic dentistry. 
how do I know when I start that I'm going to like the end result? Did you ever have a situation where, you know, you, you put the restoration in, you put the smile makeover in, you hand them the mirror, and they say, I hate this, take it out? Yeah. There are people who are unsure. I think a lot of times if you make a major change, I ask patients to bring their sister or to bring their husband or to bring somebody that's close with them to take a look at the final result before we make a decision to cement it in permanently. If they're not sure and if somebody comes in with them who helps them to make a decision, that's a wonderful thing because these are people who talk to them and see them on a regular basis. If I at all feel that a patient is unhappy and not enthusiastic and very, very reassured that everything is beautiful, I would rather not put it in permanently. I'd rather have them come back and try it again and see if there's anything I can do to make those changes before we do it. Are there unhappy people sometimes? I think that sometimes you're going to have people who you know, are going to be unhappy with certain things, but maybe their expectations were more than we could accomplish. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. I'm Dr. David Scharf. You're listening to Healthy Living Radio on WGBB. This is Healthy Living Radio with Dr. David Scharf. We're back now. Thank you very much. Um, Do people get a sense as they're going along what their smile is going to be like, or is it just right at the end that they see what it, what it is? People will know before the end. Uh, in terms of the pictures that we have, in terms of some of the ability we have on the computers to have images come up so they can see what they look like. Before we get started, patients will know pretty much exactly what the teeth are going to look like at the final restoration. Do you ever see people come back after their smile uh, is, is enhanced and they have a new hairdo, they have a new out, outfit, they lost 10 pounds? That happens so frequently. Um, I have a patient who came in that was out of work for three years and came in and decided that he couldn't stand his teeth because he just felt that people were staring at them when he was out on an interview. He decided to go ahead and have and did a smile um, makeover and we put veneers on his front teeth and changed his smile. And I don't know if there was any core, you know, any reason, but he went out, and about three months after he completed, he got a job. This man is one happy camper. And, you know, I bet you a lot of people said to him, why are you crazy? You've been out of work all those years. You're going to spend money on your smile. But, I mean, I would imagine when you're embarrassed about how you smile, it's hard to feel confident, and it's hard to project that in an interview. When we see patients, we try to express that to them, that some of their, some of their issues may be regarded to what their smile is like. Um, maybe their, their presentation and their appearance is a critical part of what they have to do. And when patients come in and they appreciate the value and, and see what it is that they can do to make a change in their appearance, a lot of patients do that now. They find it important for them to make their appearance look better. Mm -hmm. Who's your average patient? Is it, you know, uh, someone in their 60s, their 50s? Do you ever do smile makeovers on, on older people, 70, 80, 90? Who's the oldest person you ever did a smile makeover on? Implant technology is just a wonderful thing. We have had older people, patients who are 70, 80 years old, who are suffering with their dentures. 80 years old? 80 Someone's years going to come in for a small makeover? Somebody came in and decided that they were tired of not being able to chew and being uncomfortable, and we were able to find out if they were a candidate, their health was good, their bone was good, and we were able to put implants in to make them be able to chew, be comfortable, and smile again. Because now, people who have dentures who are self conscious are constantly holding their hand over their mouth or having an embarrassing moment at a really bad time. So do you give them the teeth of a 20-year-old? How do you do that? I would assume it's different teeth if it's an 80-year-old versus a 20-year-old. We're not here to change people who are 60 years old and make them look 20. Somebody comes in with that aspirations, it's really a nightmare. You really don't want to do that. If I'm going to make somebody be comfortable in their teeth, I'm going to make an 80-year-old and have them have 80-year-old looking teeth. Teeth that are older, are gray, they're, we make restorations that aren't perfect, they're chipped, they have lines in them. We try to make the restorations look like what the patients would look like if they truly had their natural teeth at this particular time of their life. You know, for you, it's almost like a catch-22 because you want the smile to look so natural. You don't want people to walk up to patients and say, hey, those are your new teeth, they look great. You want it to blend right in, but at the same time, you want, to, you want them to know that they have new teeth. The best compliment I get is no compliment at all. When 
a woman tells me that she went and she was at a party and somebody came up to her and said, what's different? You know, why do you look, what has changed about you? It's a home run for me because I don't want somebody to come and, and just up to somebody and say, wow, your teeth look, you know, unbelievable. That's not aesthetic dentistry. It should blend. It should be aesthetic. It should look like it's part of the person, not something like a white picket fence. That, to me, is, is not the desired end result. What about people who are just so anxious, you know, that they, they wanted to do this for a long time, but the anxiety is just overwhelming and keeping them away? How do you help with those patients? Well, there's a couple diff- different ways to do that. Communication is very important. But people who are very stressed and who have a lot of, de- you know, issues that way, we can do sedation dentistry on them now, which is where they come to the office. We have medications for them where they are not really asleep, but they're in a, you know, a state where they are relaxed and comfortable and they allow us to do the dentistry that they need to do. Um, there's many different ways to try to show patients that their fears are, you know, from an old, you know, from an old problem or dentistry that was done long ago. And we really do function a lot differently than that today. What would you say to the patient who's sitting home listening to this, who's been thinking about doing something for their smile a long time, and just just can't take that first step to pick up the phone? What would you say to that person? I would say come in and talk to us. The, we, we have a, we've coined a phrase where it's, it's called a meet and greet. And what we do is we want people to come in. We want them to see the office. They want to see, want, we want them to see the environment that we work in. And I want to sit face-to-face with them and look across from them and try to break down some of the barriers that they have. Sometimes I'm successful. Sometimes I'm not. A meet and greet doesn't cost you anything, just your time. Mm-hmm. And do you ever get people that come in and they're not quite ready to do their smile, but they just want to be a patient and be in your practice for a while? Do they have to get started and do the whole thing? No. A lot of times with patients like that, it's really, really best to start off slowly, do small things in the beginning, small necessary things, and then kind of work up to it. A smile makeover is something over a period of time. We don't have to jump into any sophisticated dentistry right away. Mm -hmm. Is it expensive? Is this stuff beyond the means of the average person? All different types of restorations and all different type of makeovers or enhancements come with different fees. I think people would really be surprised that with today's dentistry, it can be affordable. We can figure out how we can make this fit into your budget so that you're comfortable with this so that it doesn't become an emotional thing in terms of overwhelming financial responsibility. If you have any questions you'd like to send in to us, uh, you can email us at healthylivingradio at gmail.com. I'm your host, Dr. David Scharf. You're listening to Healthy Living Radio, dedicated to bringing you the latest advances in health and wellness so you can live better, healthier, and longer. See you next week. Have a good night. You've been listening to Healthy Living Radio with your host, Dr. David Scharf. Join us next week for another edition of Healthy Living Radio.